Okay, so I'll tell you about the decentralized collaborative web and the backfeed recipe for decentralized organization. And let me just dive straightly uh, to here. Uh, let's start with a quick overview. So you all know, you're all familiar with the blockchain 1.0, uh, such as Bitcoin. Uh, the value system is hard-coded and objective, uh, which means, for example, in Bitcoin, the value system is defined by proof of work. So pr uh, providing hashing power is valuable, and it's hard-coded into the client. It's an objective value system. The gist of it is that it's really a tracking system, and the thing that is decentralized is the ledger itself. You can make it trustless cash, diamonds, art, shipments. And overall, I would say that this class is in the early product stage. Then blockchain 2.0. Ethereum, uh, you can now softly code uh, your value system. Uh, it's still objective, so still uh, valuable contribution should be a, a machine readable, machine measurable. The gist of it, you can deploy smart contracts, and now the decentralization is about the execution, and you can basically write self-executing accounting systems, uh, banking, games, IoT, contracts, and so on and so forth. And the stage of this class, I would say, is roughly the prototype stage. A third class, which is also the class that I will uh, focus on today, is dealing with the emergent and subjective value system, such value system that human, the people define. Uh, the gist of it, it's, it allows you to basically engage with collective intelligence and really hear your decentralized governance uh, itself. So examples would be decentralized collaboration, curation of content, or even curation of physical objects uh, such as restaurants, uh, decentralized insurance uh, network, peer to peer insurance, decentralized investment funds, and so on. So as long as you want objective accounting system, blockchain is just fine. If you want a decentralized insurance system with a, with a, a subjective assessment of claims, for example, you need also uh, this kind of collective intelligence protocol or decentralized governance. And this, this class is totally in a, in still in the research stage. So let me, let me dive into the backfit really, really quick a high-level uh, overview of the backfit protocol. It is composed of three uh, element, elementary layers, the subjective layer, the objective, and the interobjective. The subjective layer is really about the P2P view and flow of content. Uh, basically, I won't get into it much, but basically it's, it's kind of a decentralized social uh, network uh, algorithm. And then the, the, main, uh, the main layer is the objective layer, which is about the network consensus, is how to allocate in a decentralized fashion to allocate reputation score and tokens to agents in a decentralized network. Uh, and then, of course, the curation of objects through the uh, value system of that network. And then the interobjective layer is about basically the relationship between various networks. So in the following, I will consider uh, the case of decentralized collaboration, but basically much of what I will say will hold for the other use case as well. So, okay, so let's just imagine network. The, the balls are, are agents with private keys. The circles are agents without private keys, basically smart contracts, or if you want, uh, decentralized networks. And all of them are agents of the, of the centralized network number one. So this is the worldview as seen by uh, network number one. We'll get back to that later. So the objective layer basically, or the in intra-network dynamics, looks something like that. So anyone, let's see, yeah. Anyone can post a, a contribution. For example, you can uh, uh, post to the network a code library, uh, and then you also post your own evaluation of that contribution. And then every, every agent in the network, any agent in the network can post uh, his evaluation of that contribution, what is the value of that contribution, the subjective value. You see different agents may have different reputation in that network, and they also can, uh, can have different assessments. At some point, when you, when you get a majority threshold, the network will now uh, uh, issue new tokens and reputation score and then allocate them to the successful contributor, but also successful evaluators. Okay, so the objective there is really about a reputa reputational weighted voting system uh, for the allocation of tokens and reputation uh, per contribution to the contributor. Um, basically, the outcome of the voting is the median. That, that's pretty important. And one consequence of that is that you only get issuance of token once you reach a ma majority threshold. We'll talk about that later. And then most importantly, there is also reputational flow from non-voters, late voters, and misaligned voters into early aligned voters. That basically creates the, the, uh, the backfit loop, um, which means that the, the majority, the majority is that is systematically aligned, uh, is, its reputation is increasing and increasing, and that creates 
that's basically create growing alignment in the network, but also growing incentive to fork the network that anyone can do in a click of a button. So that, that brings us up to the to in, in inter-objective layer, which is the existence of multiple value systems. So this is the view, the world view of network one. So now maybe this is the world view of network two. You can, as you can see, different agents, sorry, the agents in different networks may have different reputations according to the network. And the inter-objective layer in the protocol is basically about defining the, the network as being an agent in other networks. So the, the outcome is multiple value systems that they can have various relationships. They can be complementary, competing, or mother-daughter relationships, or any combination of those. Uh, and then the much of that protocol is about defining the network as an agent in other networks, which means how to take the aggregation of internal contribution within the networks uh, uh, and triggering with them, triggering the external contribution evaluation of the network in other networks. So that's that part of the protocol. And the outcome is a federal governance uh, uh, network or federal, federal, federal governance structure as well as economic relationship between networks uh, in terms of token redemption. So if that was the dynamic, uh, the intranetwork dynamic, the internetwork dynamic looks like something like that. So once, once there is a threshold and distribution of internal tokens, the network also posts uh, the evaluation to a, a larger network. But now remember that the agents in, in internally can also, may also be uh, having a reputation in the external network, and then this process can go on and on like that. So the outcome network topology in the simplest case may look like that, something like that. And in more general case, it can also be more complex. So that brings me to the problem of and solution of governance scalability. So if we go back to here, a quick look at this can, uh, can show you that, uh, well, the, go the governance scalability problem is that it in order to remain uh, to keep resilience, you need to have majority threshold for each decision to make, which is which is not very functional. So, for example, here the, f the 45 uh, agents below, let's assume they have equal reputation. If they were in a single network, then you'll have 20. You'll need 23 of them to agree about any decision. But with this network topology, you can reach decision with only 12 uh, agents attending every decision. So that's crucial, but since not, not, every, not any 12 configuration, 12 people configuration work, uh, for that reason you can show that resilience is actually kept uh, the same. Okay, so, so solving the governance scalability problem is made by semi-compositional network topology, as well as uh, added with delegated voting system and also non-voters leaking reputation. Okay, I'll just skip the subjective there. Again, it's just peer-to-peer -peer flow of information. It's basically uh, based on trust scores, reputations, and endorsements. Um, and let me quickly just, if I have some time left, yeah, let me quickly just discuss the blockchain implementation, which is uh, uh, based on, on a novel architecture. So the idea, uh, the, the question was how to implement uh, all this protocol on the blockchain in a scalable way. So. The point is that the blockchain only have a, I, I would call it blockchain minimalism. The smart contract of blockchain is also a very, very simple uh, smart contract, uh, which is basically a reputation weighted multi-sig contract to change the state. The state on the blockchain is just the reputation token balances and the established, the established votes. And then there's also the state change protocol or the hash of the protocol. And then the rest, all the messages between people uh, the, the, the signing of, mess, uh, of contributions and evaluations, as well as the calculation of the protocol itself, is all uh, export uh, uh, beyond the, the, the chain, so off-chain. So how it looks like, something like that. Someone is signing contribution, is posting it the, into the network. Someone else is uh, uh, posting evaluation, like that. They reach the majority. At that point, he has a package roughly look like that. And then he, only then he's posting the state change claim proposition to the blockchain. And then all the reputable agents are being called to calculate locally onto the machine the state change according to the protocol. And if they agree with that, to sign that uh, state change. So let me just end um, with a few, few uh, sh sharing some, some timeline. So firstly, uh, let me tell you that Backfeed uh, goes non-profit. So we're opening a non-profit foundation to continue the research and development uh, of the, the uh, protocol stack for decentralized organizations. In the 19th to 23 of October, there is a protocol workshop. If anyone is interested in that domain, please just email me. 
um, and you can participate. And then we are expecting until the end of the year to complete the protocol specification and then uh, three months later to release an alpha stage like decentralized organization. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.